mortgage that arrears have once more built up. But the Crawfords did not have to pay the capital because the endowment had to pay it that's what the judge is saying. They say you have to pay separately, but this is a different issue. But there are no arrears, so therefore there are no possession proceedings. There is a recovery of debt, it's not a possession issue. Now, on the recovery of debt, they are secured. They have got a charge on the property, but now, you will say that the charge is a trespass because you don't owe a P. For the purpose of what you are fighting, about eviction, they can't evict you on the capital on the property. Does the judge not confirm that this is the law? And you are well aware that you did pay the arrears. So those proceedings which were apparently about two months arrears those arrears have been paid. So there were no arrears and there can't be any possession, they can't rely on something that was not there. 100 Mr. Crawford has raised a number of points which he says should ground an appeal. I have scrutinized the points made by Mr. Crawford in this hearing with care. Due to the public interest I have attempted above to set out as simply as I can the law which applies in this case and my analysis of Mr. Crawford's legal submissions. He's right, he did it. How did he do it? Assumption. He didn't know the facts. He didn't have any accounts, and he said you've got a point. The whole lot is an assumption. The issue here is very clear because he said clearly in the beginning that you have got a point. So the point has not been established. He's only assuming. He can't find the debt. He doesn't know where it is. It should have been capitalized it is capitalized. If it's capitalized it is not an arrears and if it's not an arrears the possession is illegal. So all that he's been doing is a marvelous job your position stayed in law. Now, to match it to your case, he didn't have the papers to match it. And he says he cannot rely on their statement because they are not a master it's not satisfactory, their position. So in answer to their position, he cannot make a decision. 101 The points made by Mr. Crawford are either without foundation or legally misconceived. Factual assertions about changing the terms of the mortgage are misplaced, both sides agree that the mortgage terms were not changed. The legal challenges raised are misconceived and I have set out in detail above why that is so. The judge did not have the evidence to rebut you. They didn't put forward any evidence so how can he say that they are misconceived? He is making an assumption. And once again, in conclusion, the judge confirms that the mortgage terms were not changed. 102 None of the points raised by Mr. Crawford have any substance in terms of potentially defending the possession claim. None of them can be described as a point with a real prospect of success on appeal. How can he make this statement? Did he have the evidence? It's a wrong decision, it's strong language he's used, but it's an assumption, and if we want to take him to the cleaners, which I don't want to, I don't want to because you've won it in a big way now. We can establish that paragraph 102 is based on assumption, and then his statement falls automatically. But you don't need it for the moment. 103. I have considered separately whether there is some other compelling reason why an appeal should be heard. Although this case is unique to Mr. Crawford it is sadly one of many similar cases with which the courts deal all the time. It raises no new point of principle. So he's making a decision on principle, not on facts. How do you like that? 104 The order that I make is that permission to appeal out of time is granted but permission to appeal is refused. The suspension of execution of the warrant for possession of three fear clothes is lifted. So he has confused you, on the basis of assumption. He's saying there is a point, there is this, but he didn't have evidence so it's rubbish. But then what he says next, the suspension of the execution of the warrant for possession of three fear clothes is lifted. Now after I went through with you, after I read everything, let me tell you, even what you dreamed, in your dreams, yes, and everybody will say blah, corruption. The word execution is important. He hasn't got a warrant let me finish my point you know I'm looking outside the box. The warrant must identify all the questions or all this assumption. The warrant should be written, must be written the amount, how much paid, how much not paid, and all the accounts attached. And you know the warrant looks 000 debt. Ah, you see how beautiful it is. And he agreed that he hasn't got the warrant, he didn't set aside the warrant. He admitted that the order he dealt with was a suspended order. A suspended order you have to look at what are the conditions. Are you in breach of the conditions? Then they have to make a new order, anyhow. A possession order must be in date. He didn't have this. He stated clearly that it's suspended. Did he look into the conditions? 
have they been fulfilled or not? His only consideration for the whole proceeding that can take place is two months in arrears, not the capital, nothing capital is not a possession issue. Does he say it clearly? Does he say that the possession is based on two months arrears? Can you prove that the two months has been paid? Yes. So what do you want more with that? Now you understand why she's not coming to court. Because he can take her to the cleaners if he gets hold of her, do you understand? He can convert her unsatisfactory to a lie. Or he can convert it to inaccurate, misleading or false. Even inaccurate is contempt of court. So therefore she's not coming to court, and she does not want to oppose any point which he made in this decision. And she's not even asking for costs. She can't because she's lost it. She's lost it in a big way, and to prevent the embarrassment, she's simply not coming. But now you've got the answer to all your questions. And in answer to your question about what to do when you go to court for the handing down of the judgment, I'll tell you what to do, and if you change it, you'll bury yourself. You tell all the people they don't have to come, it's a waste of time. You should put your post up because people will come for nothing. Now, when you come to court, you walk in, and sit on your place. The judge will come in, and say good morning, and will say I'm handing down the judgment. I'm going to make the order which I specified or whatever it is. And you know already what the order is he wrote it. And he'll ask you have you got anything to say, Mr. Crawford. You stand up, and say thank you very much, my lord. You gave a fantastic judgment, you identified all the problems which we went through precisely in the last ten years. Thanks, bye. So there you have it, God's mark judgment handed down was to confuse and mislead us all. He did not just stop with the judgment he tried to continue with the order he made which a copy is below. Now he is in real trouble, the next document that I have now put in court is my request, review and revise. Read and compare his order with my request and you will see where he tried to confuse and mislead not only us but the general public as the order is in the public domain. Thomas Crawford and Susan Crawford 3 Fear Chase Carlton Nottingham NG4 1DN Nottingham County Forward Slash High Court 60 Canal Street Nottingham England. NG1, 7 EJ. 25th of May 2015 case number, 2PB03485. Request, review and revise. Grounds. 1. The order does not correspond to the judgment pronounced in court on the 14th of May 2015, it is inaccurate, misleading, and false in fact and in law. 2. There was no documentary evidence in response and forward slash or any defense on the detailed statements on the claim. 3. The statement in the order, 2. Permission to appeal refused, is inaccurate as the judicial findings there was no case to appeal as the court affirms that there was only one mortgage deed, endowment mortgage, there was never any secondary mortgage as Bradford and Bigley plc presented to the court. 4. In the order, the stay of execution of the warrant of 3. Fear Chase, Carlton, Nottingham, is lifted, the correction that should be made in the order. The stay of execution of the warrant, notice of evictio, of the warrant, as the warrant was not in front of the court, is lifted. We wait a speedy inter-party hearing which will only take 30 minimum to deal with. We are fully responsible for the statements above. Statement of Truth. T. Crawford S. Crawford. May the 25th, 2015 May the 25th, 2015. Justice delayed is justice denied. CC, to whom it may concern. Debt Free TV, in association with getoutofdebtfree.org.